very much, Tom, and thanks for those kind words. Special thanks to Michael and David from Education City Golf. And uh, thank you all very much, and the European tour. Thank you for convening the press conference today. I'd like to do, give a special welcome to our amazing American athletes, Johannes Veerman and John Catlin. It's a big honor for me. I'm very pleased to be joining you all today for this press conference. For some of you all, it's possibly your first time in Qatar. So I wanna welcome you here. And I'm sure you will have great stories to share about your time in Qatar even with COVID, it's, it's an amazing place to be. So I know you've traveled uh, around the, the world, around the globe, and I, I know you'll come out of here with amazing stories as well. Um, one of the things um, that I think it'll be useful to, to have you talk about while you're here is the role that golf has played in your lives in breaking down cultural barriers and making the world a more close-knit shared space of ideas and cultural exchanges. So I really appreciate uh, you all for being here today to represent the United States, to build bridges of cultural understanding, and to share your stories as an inspiration to inspiring, aspiring golfers and athletes and, and young people uh, in any field. Today's press conference and the Cutter Masters Golf Tournament both fall, uh, as Tom mentioned, within the U.S. Cutter 2021 Year of Culture. So this year of culture celebrates the long-standing relationship between our two countries and highlights the rich diversity of our peoples and cultures. We are super delighted to be working with our primary partners, Qatar Museums and the Qatar Embassy in Washington, as well as many other valued partners throughout the country to engage the people of Qatar through a, a universal passion for sports. The US Embassy here in Doha looks forward to hosting future sports events as outlined on the US Embassy Doha webpage and the Year of Culture websites, which you can find uh, through a simple Google search. We hope you'll participate in our upcoming events, whether online or in person, and joining us in promoting our shared values and mutual understanding through sports, all while having a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Ambassador Holtz, thank you so much for those uh, opening words. If I could just ask our two, uh, our two athletes some opening questions. Uh, John, this is your first time in Qatar. Um, what's your experience of the country so far? Obviously, in, in a little bit different circumstances with how we're living during this pandemic, but your first experiences of the, uh, of the country, and you must be looking forward to coming back when restrictions will be lifted. Yeah, it's been great so far. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I landed yesterday morning. Uh, was welcomed great by the uh, by the airport staff, and then we got to the hotel as well, which was a lovely, lovely hotel. Uh, the views are fantastic. And then coming out to the golf course, uh, this golf course is in immaculate shape. Uh, the people have been uh, nothing but nothing but accommodating. Um, and I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to being able to come back when things are a little more normal and uh, explore and see what, see what the city of Doha and I, you know, Qatar has to offer. Thank you, John. And Johannes, you were here last year, so it's your, your second time here in Qatar. What, what have your experiences of this country been like? Oh, last year was about this time. Last year, this was the last event that was normal. So when I think of Qatar, I have this feeling of like, oh, those are the good old days when we had spectators and we could all hang out without masks and, um, you know, the golf tournaments were running normal and we could travel all normal. So when I think of Qatar, I think, oh, happy times. You know what I mean? Because that was the last thing that um, the last tournament that was ran normal. Um, last year, I stayed a couple of extra days. Uh, my caddy was staying with a host family. So I was able to stay with them. And uh, I got to experience, you know, just like their friends and a little bit of the, the warm culture, the very friendly culture that came with just being here in Doha. And, um, and also the starter last year was a professor at one of the universities over here. So she took me to the education city. I got to see the campus. I got to meet the, uh, the dean of the Texas A&M University. So, so far, I mean, Qatar, definitely a very special place. That must have been quite a special experience for you because you're a, a Texas A&M uh, alumnus as well. So what, what's it like That's seeing right. that link between the two countries through education? Oh, it was, it was really cool. So A&M has, we have so many traditions at, at A&M, right? Um, one of the things that we always do at A&M as well, you know, it's kind of minor, but every time you say hello, you, you don't say hello. The greeting is howdy. So you, you would say howdy and then everyone would re reply back with howdy. So um, 
I get there to the A&M building and howdy is written on the top of the door, but in Arabic. And I was, you know, I was taken away by that. But and then I thought that is so cool to kind of like see, um, see it written in Arabic, took a picture of it and I sent it to all my friends and they also got a really big kick out of it. So it's really nice to see that A&M was still like the A&M University here in Qatar was still taking the traditions that we do at the A&M University in Texas. I was giving it like that Arabic flair, that Qatari flair that made it really cool and very special and so very, very unique. Fantastic. Gentlemen, thank you for those. <laughs> we did. Thank you, Janice. Uh, thank you for those opening remarks. Uh, we'll just go to the first question, please. Uh, v. Michael from Inside Qatar. Yeah, hi. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is a question both to the ambassador as well as the players. To the ambassador, I'd like to know, ma'am. Uh, there have been many tournaments uh, organized during the COVID uh, situation in the last few months. What is your impressions about Qatar, how Qatar has organized these events? And to the two golfers, um, there are a lot of aspiring golfers in Qatar. So John and, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot the other name. Uh, could you just tell me what exactly they need to do to get up to that level? They're amateur, probably amateur golfers now. They're aspiring to be at the professional level. What do they need to do to get up there in terms of resources, in terms of playing tournaments, in terms of experience, exposure. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. If we can go to uh, Master Holtz, please. Thank you very much. It's a great question. Am, am I, is my mic on? Sorry, yes, we can hear you. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I thought I had turned it off by accident. Um, I, I think I've been to one or two sporting events uh, this month, and I think uh, the cutters are doing a very good job of trying to keep it open but COVID safe. So you will see that the, you know, the seating is spaced out, masks are um, required except when you're eating. They've got people monitoring um, throughout the different uh, sites. Uh, the Itiraz, like the, the, the app that shows that people are COVID negative. So I think they're doing, I, I, really walking that fine line between being able to host the events and keeping people COVID safe. So I, I'm very impressed from what I've seen. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. We'll go to Johannes, please, to answer the question for aspiring golfers and what advice you'd give them. If you could unmute yourself, please, Johannes. Better? <laughs> Good. Well, I think what makes, you know, uh, someone great is competition. So if you have a culture or, you know, a circuit where juniors can come together and compete with one, an with one another in a very um, a synergistic kind of way, you know, in a very, like, um, very competitive, friendly environment, you know, as they say, like, one knife sharpens the other. I think that if you had, um, you know, like a really strong junior league starting out that promoted golf and made it really fun, but also made it very competitive, you would have a lot of people a lot of juniors that would be just be on fire to succeed at this game because they're just trying to beat their friends. And by doing so, they get better and better and better. Thank you, Janice. John, any advice for aspiring golfers? Yeah, um, uh, I think Johannes kind of hit the, hit the head on the nail right there. Uh, he was spot on. I agree, when I was young growing up, I was very, very fortunate to have the opportunity to compete against a lot of junior golfers. It kind of spurred me on. You know, you never really wanted to lose to your buddy. And uh, so I think that's kind of where it started. And then from there, I was very, very lucky to uh, be introduced to some great coaches. And uh, they were able to kind of point me, point me in the right direction, both from, you know, a fundamental side, mental side, practice side. And that's kind of where I was able to really, really fine tune my game. Uh, but, you know, I think that I think the fire was definitely started from, you know, competing with my friends at a very, very early age. And it's just kind of grown from there. So, yeah, I think that's a really, really good point Johannes had. Fantastic. Thank you for those answers. Uh, are there any other questions on the stream? If you'd like to raise your hand, then we can come to you. Not at the moment, but if I could ask the uh, ask the two golfers, obviously our ambassador Holtz does uh, fantastic work here as an ambassador for the United States here in Qatar. Do you guys feel a, a sense of of you being sporting ambassadors when you travel the world and have the opportunity to to represent the United States on the world stage? Uh, if we could start with John, please. 
Yeah, I definitely do. Um, you know, I'm very, very, I'm very, very proud of where I'm from. Um, you know, I, I feel very, very lucky and fortunate to have grown up in the U.S. and being able to travel the world and see new cultures and kind of bring, bring my part of the mess with me. I think it's been a, really, you know, a very, very cool experience and something I look forward to continuing to do as I, you know, continue to move up, move up the ranks of being a professional golf. Johannes, I imagine you feel the same. Yes, I mean, you know, everybody is, is proud of where they came from and from their home country. And I know John and I, we're no exception. Um, you know, it's an honor to have the U.S. flag by our names. Um, you know, we're well aware that being an American has the stigma of just like being loud, being arrogant, maybe a little ignorant. And, um, you know, me and John, we do our best uh, everywhere we go. We try to reverse that opinion of a lot of people. But um, so we try to do our best. We try to put our best foot forward, as they say. And um, yeah, and we have a lot of fun doing it. Fantastic. Thank you for your answer. Ambassador Holtz, what, uh, what other events does the U.S. Embassy have lined up for the Year of Culture? So we have a number of events. As with everything, COVID has slowed us down quite a bit. And um, so we've had to reschedule many of our things more toward the fall, hoping that um, with the, the way that cutteries are taking care of the second wave, we'll be able to do more. Um, so we've got musical events. We've got many online events uh, coming up. We've got a cooking event. We are working with U.S. companies. So I can't list them all now, but if you go on our uh, U.S. Embassy website uh, or the Facebook, there's a whole, they've got now a calendar of events. So it's a wide range of things. You know, we've got the U.S. Uh, Air Force Central Command Band in the region. So we started off with a uh, women's uh, Washington Spirit women's football team or soccer team, uh, friendly match with the Cutteries women's team. So we're hoping to bring them back in the in the fall and do another friendly match. So we've got musical events with this uh, Air Force Band and the Cutter Symphony Orchestra. We, we want to bring a, a country western singer out uh, solo and do a concert in the desert because we are limited in how many um, to how many people we can have in any one place. So we're, we're having to get a little bit more creative with the sites and how many people, you know, the symphony orchestra is like 65 some people. We're limited to 35 on stage. So we're, we, we are making do the best we can. We've got poetry slam coming up, Arabic and English poetry slam. We, we have a whole range of things. So I encourage you to go, go to our websites, our social media, and you'll see the calendar in there. And as we come hopefully out of the second wave of COVID a bit, you'll see more added on. Thank you for that. Sounds like a very busy year. We'll, uh, we'll go to Michael Braidwood for the next question, please. I've got a question for both the uh, professionals, uh, John and Johannes. Uh, welcome, uh, gents, to Education City Golf Club. It's great to see you here. And I wish you both all the best of luck uh, this week. And I think uh, to reiterate your points of, about being American and, and traveling and uh, trying to dispel the myths, I think by virtue of travel, um, I think just opens everyone, every young person's eyes to the whole world and, and makes you so much more culture aware. So it's fantastic that you've chosen to apply your trade on the European tour. And I think they'll make you much better golfers as a result of that. Now we have... Um, a large amount of avid amateur golfers here. So unlike VJ's question, which is how to become a champion golfer, a lot of these amateur golfers are gonna be terrible golfers for the rest of their lives, but they love the sport. So what one tip would you give the, the happy weekend hacker golfer and how they could get their best scores and maybe break 100 or break 90 and aspire to their own golfing dreams? <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would say, um, that, you know, if you can just get around the greens, so so hang on, let me start from the beginning. If you can get out of the bunker in one shot, I think you will save, you know, that's a good step forward. I think if you can eliminate a lot of three putts, you will save yourself a lot of shots. I think if you're chipping and you can get it on the green in one shot, I mean, I think if you can do those three things, I think you can break a um, hundred, you can definitely break 90 doing that. Um, because those are where I think a lot of amateurs make their, their big compounding errors is once they get to the green, they kind of, you know, they fuddle it up a little bit. So if you can get on the green and don't three putts, you're golden. 
Sound advice, Johannes. John, any advice? Yeah, I would definitely say, uh, you know, Johannes is spot on with the short game. I think that's a definite, you know, a big, a big area of the game that, you know, takes a lot of touch, a lot of feel. And if you spend some time on that and tighten that up, I think that'll definitely help. But I think kind of part of what I, I did that kind of made me a better golfer was I, you know, I, I instilled in really looking into good coaching. And um, I think that really, really helped me. And I've seen how it can help other golfers as well. You get the right information in a very capable person's hands, and it's amazing what they can accomplish. So I would say start off with the short game, and then as you start to get a little more confident with that, I would definitely look for very, very skilled instructors. Thank you very much, Sean. Everyone, thank you so much for your time today. I'll just uh, end the press conference with one final question for each of our three guests to the two athletes and to Ambassador Holtz. What's one thing you would like to tell the world about the United States? What's the one thing that you wish people knew about, about your home country? If we could start with Johannes. Can you, can you repeat the question again? It went out for me and John. No problem. What's one thing you wish people knew about the United States from your experiences? Um, I would say one thing that I wish people knew about the United States is uh, just how just how welcoming we are. Um, I think we do a really, really good job, of, especially because, you know, the U.S. is kind of is, is kind of a melting pot of you know different cultures, kind of like what we were talking about earlier, uh, you know, me and Johannes are very fortunate to be able to travel the world. But, you know, the cool thing about when you are actually in the U.S. is you get some come in, uh, you know, come in contact with so many different people, so many different that really, really appreciate, you know, the U.S. for what it really is. Thank you, John. Johannes? Yeah, um, you know, it, it kind of what John touched on, you know, obviously, uh, we are very proud of our traditions. And most importantly, we want you guys, visitors, to be part of those traditions as well. We want to take you to our American football games. We want to take you to our rodeos. You know, we want you to be a part of our, you know, crazy barbecues, 27 different types of wing sauces you have to try. You know, we want to never shot a gun. Let's go to my ranch. You know, let's try four wheelers and, and shoot guns together. Um, so um, Americans, we have a lot of things that we do that are very American, but most importantly, we want visitors, people who are not from the U.S. to come and experience those things because um, uh, we, we just want you, because we just want to have fun with you guys and, and bond over with other nationalities over those things. Fantastic, Yanis. Thank you so much. Ambassador Holtz, I imagine you'd echo those sentiments. You know, I could, I could not say it better myself. Um, exactly right. We, we want you to come. We like learning about other people. We are you. So, uh, you know, one of our, our, one of you guys mentioned that we are a melting pot. So we're from everywhere you're from. And, you know, maybe not in each individual person, but you will find every culture, every religion, every type of uh, nationality in the United States. We love this. We want you to come. We're proud of it. Um, there's politics and then there's the American people. So this is what the American people value and love. Fantastic words, thank you so much. To our athletes, John and Johannes, thank you so much for your time. Ambassador Holtz, thank you for your time as well. Uh, to the journalists on the stream, a recording will be made available to you via WeTransfer. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Tom, see you tomorrow.